One of the problems we have with HDR images that come from Photomatix Pro is that they lack contrast. They look a little bit flat and a little bit dreamy. Photomatix Pro 4.2 now has some finishing adjustments with contrast enhancements as one of the options, but you don't have very much control in Photomatix Pro, so I prefer to do this inside of Photoshop. Now, I showed in a previous movie how to do this with the high-pass sharpening filter effect inside of Photoshop Elements, and it would run exactly the same here inside of Photoshop. But I want to show you a different technique that only works in Photoshop as well. So what I need to do is I need to duplicate this layer. I can do that in a number of ways. I'm just going to drag it here down onto the page, and that creates a duplicate. I'm going to change the blend mode. Oh, sorry, no, I'm not going to change the blend mode in this one. I'm going to go to my Channels panel, first of all. And you'll notice that I'm in RGB. That's what this means. I need to change my mode. So I'm going to go to Image Mode and come down to LAB Color. It's going to ask me if I want to flatten. I don't really want to flatten. I could have duplicated this after the mode change. That would work too. So I want to select the Lightness Channel. I only want to affect the Lightness Channel. I don't want to select the A and B or where the color is. But I want to see the effect, and the effect is having of affecting this channel on the entire image. So I'm going to click the little eyeball here beside where it says LAB, which means I, I can see the effect that what I'm doing has on the entire image, but I actually am only really filtering this channel. Now I'm going to go up to my filter menu, and I'm going to choose Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. And what I want to do typically when I'm doing an unsharp mask operation, if I'm doing standard sharpening, is I would have a radius of, say, one pixel and move the amount maybe up around here. I don't know. Whatever. In this case, for the time being, I'm going to push this up to 500. And then I'm going to push the radius up real high. And it looks really bad. Really, really bad. Really bad. And then it starts to look like I've got glowing radioactive stuff happening. And that's about where I want to stop. And then I move this down. Again, that was just really so I could see what I was doing. And I'm going to move this down, say, here in the 50 range, whatever. And then I'm going to start moving this up and down and kind of see. It starts to look a little dreamy again if I move it this far up. And it starts to look a little over-sharpened down here. So I want to kind of find a happy medium between the two of these. Oh, about like that. That's fine for me. So that's what I've got. That's sort of the before and the after. Now what I could do is I can actually, I'm going to go to my Layers panel, and I'm going to create a new adjustment layer, Curves. And I might create just a little bit of additional uh, contrast here. I'm just going to click right down here at about three quarters of the way down. Just lower it ever so slightly, maybe come right here to the middle, and raise that just a bit. So we added just a little bit of contrast here. Now, we're only affecting, affecting the lightness. And since our image has gotten more contrasty, the colors are actually looking a little less saturated. So we could use a hue saturation adjustment layer, but when we're in lab color mode, we can use curves. I'm going to create a separate layer just so I have more control here. And I can steepen the curve on the A and B channels to increase the saturation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this top corner point right here. I'm going to hold my shift key and hit my left arrow key twice. And things are going to start to look very magenta. I hit my plus button again, and then I'm going to hold shift and push my right arrow key twice. And that's going to neutralize what we've just done, but it's going to increase the uh, color saturation in the greens and magentas. Now I want to go down to the B channel. This is the blues and yellows. So right now you'll notice this the solid color right there. That means this is the selected point. So I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to hit the right arrow key twice. And that cools down the image. I'm going to hit the plus button, and that moves my selected point right here. I'm going to hold down the shift key and hit the left arrow twice. So there you are. If you see before and after, I've added a fair bit of contrast. Now, of course, I could push these further, and the further in that I push them, the more that it's going to boost the contrast in the image. If I boost one of them, if I, for instance, move this one further, then what I'm going to do is actually increase a color cast, which may be desirable. This warms the overall picture. In this case, I don't really want to do that, so I'm going to back it off. If I moved this one down here over towards the right, that would cool the overall picture. Anyways, so our original picture, let me just 
put that away. Our original picture looked like this. And this is what we ended up with after just a little bit of processing.